All right, hello, KM6LYW radio viewers. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit more about packet radio today. I know, surprise, right? Um, I think this is uh, something a lot of people don't realize is that you can actually do APRS packet radio, you know, sending beacons and messages over HF. Uh, there's uh, HF frequency. You know, on your VHF radio, normally you would send it to 144.39, but if you have an HF radio, like this ICOM 7300 uh, on the screen, you can actually tune to 10.1476 megahertz on the 30 meter band, and you're going to hear APRS traffic there. Now, it's not going to be the usual 1200 baud stuff. We have to actually slow this down to 300 baud, so it's going to sound different. I think the, the mark and space tones are at 1600 and 1800 hertz. Uh, this is going to be upper sideband, uh, so single sideband. Remember, all modes in HF are always upper sideband. And uh, I'm kind of waiting for traffic to fall over this waterfall just to, just to see here. I'm not seeing any just yet, but we'll see a little uh, activity up there. And I'm not seeing it. It's 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 not it's not often and there's not a lot of eye gates out there because it really doesn't have to be because if you look over here on the map this was the last beacon that I that I sent this is just an APRS uh, mic exchange beacon and you'll notice it made it all the way from California to Southern Australia uh, Melbourne maybe maybe so I actually just sent a regular old APRS beacon on 10.1476 megahertz at 300 baud and it was picked up uh, in Melbourne. Uh, I don't know what the miles are on that. 8,000 miles? So this is, you know, this is possibly a world record APRS uh, distance. And of course, you can see how, what transpired in APRS.fi. I actually didn't hear it repeat. Um, in fact, it might not have repeated. It probably just gated my packet to the internet. But you can see it was VK5ARG here. Um, if you go to APRS.fi website and... Uh, this is just running straight up direwolf too that's what's so cool about this so um this is direwolf running i haven't heard any packets yet um i don't see any yet so this is the last packet that i sent um from me uh, one change you want to consider uh, you know usually you put wide one and wide two in your routing path when you're when you're using aprs on hf go ahead and make your routing path g-a-t-e for gate um, that's kind of an HF convention, um, and you can do that by editing uh, direwolf.conf and changing your, your beacon string. Um, let me see if I can pull up another window here, and we're going to take a look at direwolf.conf as we use it for HF. All right, so this is going to be a different configuration when you're, when you're doing APRS packet radio on HF. Uh, and I want you to look at the modem string. Um, there's a modem definition, and you'll see right here it says modem 300. 7 at 30. So what that means is use the 300 baud modem instead of the 1200 baud. Uh, the default is to use the 1600 and 1800 tones. Uh, you don't have to specify that, but you can also put 7 at 30. And what that means is to start up seven decoders and a space them out 30 hertz apart. Because uh, remember, we're using single sideband, so the tones might not be perfect depending on any skew you might have on your radio. So basically, there's seven dire wolves running at 30 hertz apart, uh, and they're all hovering right around 10.1476 megahertz. Um, I know that's a lot of information, but that's really the, the, the big deal, uh, the big change in dire wolf. Uh, and then uh, on your beacon, let me see if I can find the P beacon line here. I got a few commented out. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, this is my P beacon line. Um, and the important change you want here is the via part. You want to say you want to. This is your digi path, right? Normally this would be wide one, wide two. So I want my my digi path here is gate, comma wide two dash one, and this will help uh, the HF I gates that are out there, like that one in uh, Melbourne, Australia, to go ahead and gate your packet to the internet. So this is my entire P beacon line. Uh, I know it's probably hard to read. Uh, that's working for HF. So that's really the only configuration change you need to make in Direwolf. Um, if I got Direwolf running up here. I was really hoping I'd receive a packet while we're doing this. Um, but you can see when Direwolf fired up, it says it's uh, channel 0, 300 baud um, at 1600 and 18 hertz. That's the mark in space. And uh, these are the seven decoders. Remember, we had that seven at 30. Uh, so these are the slightly different frequencies that it's looking at. Uh, to, just in case my ICOM 7300 has any uh, skew in the dial frequency and the actual frequency. In fact, that's a whole another video. You know, if you go into one of those time servers at like 10 megahertz, I think they're at. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Times, time stations out there. They, they emit a perfect tone 
on frequency and you can calibrate your radio you can do that at least on the icom uh, i know and, and just get rid of any dial skew that might be on there so i still haven't heard any packets uh, this was my packet going out um, and we know that was picked up in australia and dire wolf is sending a packet out i think every five minutes or so but uh, this this was the last one and since dire wolf is also a tnc I and mean, you can fire up uh Something like, uh, I don't know, Yak. I use Yak for stuff. I'll fire that up. And Yak is now connected to the Starwolf instance. I'll put that up here. Kind of has this cool Kenwin display. So when you do hear stations coming in, they'll pop up on this little orange display on the bottom right. But you can do operations like uh, chat with stations, send email. Um, let's see, what can, what could we do here that would be interesting? Maybe send an email. I'm going to do a chat with station, and I'm going to do KM6LYW-9, and that is my APRSD radio. That's my virtual radio on the cloud. It, it responds to commands, so I'm going to send it a command to uh, uh, send an email to myself. Um, so in my case, I think it's uh, dash CL. Those are my initials. Okay, this is a test from um, over HF exclamation point. I know that's really hard to read, but that's what I just typed in there. And I don't know if you can hear the radio spinning up. You can certainly see it. I just sent that packet on 10.1476 megahertz. And, uh, you know, it's hard to say if it, if it really went out. What I, what I can do is, uh, click on my station here and go into info and then go into raw and we can actually see the raw packets that came out of my radio at least how they were heard somewhere in the world um, we didn't hear anything yet uh, all we saw is two beacons I, my radio is actually transmitting again that packet and hit reload it doesn't look like anyone heard that message so cam6 liw-6 is my uh, radio here that's the ssid is dash six so yeah unfortunately no one actually heard that message and it'll keep resending that message until it gets an ack and it probably never will get an ack because honestly the apr stations on hf don't they don't don't digipeat they mostly just relay to the internet and if, the, if you're sending a message to someone specifically you know it, when it goes to the internet it'll actually pop up on vhf uh, stations that do repeat. Uh, <laughs> that's getting complicated, but but the HPRS, the APRS information service backend is really the big bridge the infra, uh, that you know puts together all of the radios, whether they're on HF or VHF. So yeah, it doesn't look like my message made it out, but you can see that I did get a couple of packets out. Um, one was via VK5ARG, that was our Australia station, that was cool, and the other one was uh, WA5LUY, we made it there, we can look at a map view on that guy. So he is in, where is he at? I made it to Arkansas. So one packet made it to Arkansas, and then another one of my beacon packets actually made it to Melbourne, and it doesn't look like my message is making it through, I was kind of hoping it would. But anyways, you know, that's packet radio, not everything goes through. Um, it's clear that a couple of my beacons went through. And I'm not at a crazy amount of power. I, you know, I don't recommend going to 100% power when doing digital modes. It's usually not necessary, and you know, it just takes a ton of current. Um, so your radio will run a lot cooler. Uh, so anyways, we did HPRS operations today uh, on 10.1476 megahertz, and uh, just using straight up Direwolf with a couple of configuration changes. Uh, and then we used Yak to connect to Direwolf as a terminal node controller. And we actually uh, sent a message, though it doesn't look like it was received anywhere. Um, I haven't gotten email on my on my phone. That's actually what that message is going to be. I would send email to my phone. All right, so APRS on HF. Cool, huh? I don't, I don't think a lot of people know about this. Um, if you want to spin up an iGate, that would be really cool. There's not many. I can, maybe there's three or four in the United States and then you know a sprinkling of them around the world. Um, this would be really easy to do in an SDR radio. It would be almost you know no cost. Um, if you got an HF SDR radio, just to iGate uh, traffic over APRS um, on HF. All right, this has been another KM6LYW <laughs> radio moment. I hope you guys are having fun operating uh, packet radio uh, on HF. Let me know how it goes in the comments. And, of course, like and subscribe. And uh, I even have a Patreon page if you want to help support this channel and uh, get access to early release software from KM6LYW Radio. So it's patreon.com 
slash KM6LYW. Uh, 73, everyone. I'm clear.